Hi, I'm uh, Rash uh, Ravishankar again uh, with another episode of Friday Poems, the weekly program that we link up every Friday. Many poets have already participated uh, in this program and many more are expected to read their poems. The poet we are introducing today actually needs no introduction. Uh, the poet is uh, Rochelle Othkar from Mumbai. At present she is in Dubai and uh, Pune. Rochelle Podkar uh, writes both in Marathi and English and uh, she is a very well known author in India who has got uh, many poetry nominations uh, like the ancient Charles Auditory Cortex 2018 the great Indian poetry contest 2018 the first runner-up for war specials and many such nominations and she has short story nominations like uh, Open Road Review 2016 uh, she was the winner. The Best of Haitian Short Stories uh, organized by Kitab International 2018 uh, got selected for Chit Mahal. Uh, the Best of uh, Asian Speculative Short Stories again Kitab International 2018. Uh, then as a creative uh, writing mentor she was invited at Iowa's uh, Summer Institute 2019. Uh, she also conducts Haibun writing workshops. As a translator, his book of uh, bilingual uh, translated poems along with uh, Sanket Matre, the coordinates of us, uh, which is bilingual, comes in both Marathi and English. Uh, has been published uh, recently and uh, she is widely anthologized and read her poetry in India, Bali, Iowa, Macau, Sterling, Glasgow, Hong Kong, Ukraine, Hungary, Bangladesh and the Gold Coast. Her last book was a book of uh, a collection of short stories the Bombay Hangovers, Bombay Hangovers, uh, which was a, a, a very well appreciated uh, book. She is reading two of her poems today for us. Thank you, Rosha, for inviting me over to the Friday poems. I'm so glad to join song to this forest of bird song. The poems I choose for you today are Bedrock and the Earth Remembers. I have turned more and more philosophical in these past years. I guess a motif of aging. As if until 40, I could count my age, celebrate my birthdays. But crossing 40, I reached a space of infinity from where I gaze. And so this poem, Bedrock. We are given in to the roughness of the seas, made to catch its erratic blue between our irises, thought of winds but not of sails, and never the ship. Shipbuilding isn't a skill we learn since birth, that is, discovery. The Bhagavad Gita is a log line. Its script in the fulcrum of its seed, the tree subverted, growing through roots under the surface of a psychic stampede. For how is it possible for humanity to leave the gravity of labor, disconnecting it from fruit? How can we train our fingers to sow seeds but not chisel shaft, seethe, sickle and skith for harvest and reap? Sow seeds and let the rain decide when it came, 
balancing what we controlled and what we didn't. Half of life spent confusing the two, most of life spent in controlling that which we didn't control. Plan on executing the seas, cartographing tides, calibrating plate shifts. When our ships withered in its decks, sails, seams, masts and bodies. And when we find the ship, after a long search through a hard ocean, lying at the side of the shores, it is just the starting point to build it because it's the only ship we will ever have the only ship we will ever know karm the labor of our palm lines bedrock and this poem was published first in the antonym magazine <music> Now while we navel gaze a living, somewhere far out and not so far, the earth is crumbling, dissolving, breaking down, particle, dar particle. And we are not aware because it isn't in front of our radar screens, not in our lines and fields of vision. And so this poem, the earth remembers. The earth remembers her orange-spotted filefish and quivering trees, kidnapped polar bears, cods, penguins, missing corals and golden toads, rub marks against barks in the smell of territorial piss, muscle memory of travesties. She remembers the brink of brink, who used what and how much, Erasing carbon calligraphies, green to grey. Temperatures rising in a room each year by two degrees. In gatherings of ground up hurricanes, prayer songs of beating hearts, the earth remembers her Chipko movement. 20th century Rajasthan, Amrita Devi and 85 others sticking their backs to save the unfelled balding forests in fodder and firewood, cars making the roads small, hands into cave mouths and tigers prowling the city banks, eating up children. Expropriation in green to rust, no clock sticking backward. The earth remembers the heart of a drying lake, gut, where all breathe an equal air, of light bulb promises. No crisis on the plate, the cost of a dreamer's lazy's fare, without heat waves rising sea levels closest to the front lines with your chest bare. No central heating or cooling systems, disproportionate hot and cold places in lost battles. The earth remembers her stare. Housekeeping what gets dirty, cleaning up after the dance, civil disobedience for unseen ribs in the hens and the eggs, the cows and her milk, the land and her mines, green bells and deserts. The earth remembers her bowels of toxic dump, waters polluted, bodies submerged, emissions in worrisome bubbles. How much it took to grow a toddler nation against an adult one. Clean combustion, equalizing a platter, vacant lots of gardens, rust to green. Radiations in the face of imperialism, overconsumption, capitalism, greed. The earth remembers her severed temper. The earth remembers. Thank you for inviting me and having me over. I'm Rochelle Potker saying goodbye.